I see so many solutions that have poor or no naming conventions, no comments, and no organization. Commenting, organizing, and naming are three of the most important things you can do as a database developer. So why, you ask? Well, let me give some examples. Let's say you don't comment, and you come back six months later to do some updates to a solution. You go, hmm, I don't remember why I'm doing this. Why wouldn't I do it this way? You have to go through the whole same process and rethink it. Of course, some things are obvious, but some things aren't. You don't comment everything. But comment the things that need commenting that might be more complicated, especially if you might pass this solution on to a new developer. It happens all the time. They need to be able to figure out what you did. Here's another example. Let's say you have a messy room. I know some people say I have a, you know, a science to, to my disorder, and I know where everything is. But honestly, you can't really do that with a database. You have to keep it nice and organized so you can find things more quickly. It's about efficiency. It allows you to do things quicker, and especially if somebody adopts your solution. And another thing is naming conventions. They help you find the script you're looking for, or you, you know, naming conventions go all over the place. Layouts, table occurrences, fields, everything. If you have a good naming convention, you know how to look for things. And we're going to cover about examples about these and show you, because this example file here contains scripts that adhere to my style of commenting, naming conventions, and organization. So there are many styles out there. I'm going to show you mine, like I said, and feel free to adopt it, modify it, or go out and copy somebody else that you like better, or develop your own. Just make sure you do it. It'll benefit you in the long run. Yeah, it's going to take you a, uh, an extra minute or maybe two to comment a script, but if it took you half an hour to write, it's going to be all worth it in the long run if you do it right then rather than later. So try to do it as you go. Let's go into the script workspace. And you see what I do is I have up here a separator, an empty script that simply says developer in it. And then I have another separator. And then I have the about section tells about me. And often what I'll do is I'll put in additional information for our, our different scripts just for the developer. But a lot of times what I'll even do is I'll put in here my name, developed by database pros. And then I might come in here once I save that and do another new script and put in my website. Make sure you spell it right. It's whatever you want, but typically it's a, it's a good idea to identify yourself at the top. Or put a script in there and put, if it's been passed along, put in who developed it and when. And I don't just use folders. I like these separators because, you know, I've got a big screen. I can see a lot of stuff on here, and separators sometimes are better for me. But you'll see folders being used down here as well. I just don't like opening and closing them. But that that's just me. I mean, you use them if you feel like they're good. But I do like these different little separators here showing the different sections. So here's the triggers. Here's the scripts. Here's the new ones. The new ones I'll put down at the bottom if I maybe I, I decide to organize and comment at the end of the day. You know, that's perfectly fine too. Put them all down at the end so you know and then organize them to where they need to go. And come up with folder names and, and areas that make sense to you as a developer. Uh, I personally choose generalized areas like navigation, find, records, subscripts, triggers, things like that. But you might have a category that's very specific for that particular solution that has nothing to do with FileMaker elements. So it's up to you how you name them. It's just make sure you come up with a name. If there's, if you start seeing a bunch of scripts that should go into a folder that kind of are the same thing, come up with a name for it and put it in there. So my naming convention for scripts, let me open up some of these and get to one of these. This is my general name. In fact, it's really best when we go down to records here. So if you see record new, record duplicate, record delete, I've got these square brackets which really make things jump out at you. So what I typically do is use an action and an object. So you see it's record is the object and here's the action. Record, so I can come in here, very easily come in here and type in record and find all the things that have to do with records. 
and I could have called this Record Show All Records or Record Show All if I wanted to, but it all depends on your naming convention. I wanted this to show up like this, and I can see all these scripts, all these scripts that have commonalities in them, and it makes it very, very helpful and easy for me to find what I want. I use these brackets because they stand out. It's up to you. You can use, you know, underscores and all lowercase if you want. I personally use proper case, but if it's going to be a specifically a script designed for the web, I'm going to adhere to web ideals, which is all lowercase, no spaces, and so I'll make a special web folder and put just my and just and name them differently in there. I, I just like I think using these brackets makes my life so much more e you know much easier when I'm looking for stuff. Makes them stand out. I really like how they read and I've I've gotten used to it. I developed this uh, uh, a long long time ago and I just I just enjoy it. And you'll see me do some other things like some pipes here like that occasionally and things. You know it's really up to you. I'm just giving you different ideas here. So um, try to stick with the uh, you know a naming convention that works for you and you may change it as you do each job and develop it more and more but be consistent within the same job so it's easy to find stuff you can get used to it and know how to find things okay let's talk a little bit about commenting I personally think it's a problem when you over comment how do you over comment well <laughs> when you have more comments than script steps only comment the stuff that's going to be complicated later. Let's go through some of these, like the startup script. Everybody knows what that does. You know why you're doing it. You're setting these system formats on. What are your movie? You don't need to comment this. It's putting it in the upper left-hand corner. It's, it's readable. All this stuff is readable. There's no comments in here. There's no need. There's no need for comments here. Go into the subscripts. Now, this comment's more of a teaching comment for you guys, but really you don't need anything here because it's either allow user word on or off full access. There's no need for comments here. It's pretty straightforward. Same thing with setter capture. Allow toolbars. I didn't comment this one at all because I think it's obvious. If you know what a toolbar is, a formatting bar, then you know then you know what this is doing. It's checking to see if you're the full uh, the developer and turning them on, otherwise turning them off. Installing the menu set, same thing, very straightforward. Lock, zoom, hide. This is more for training here. It's not really a comment that I would normally put in there. I wouldn't put any comments on any of these subscripts. They're obvious. Then you got your navigation. Okay. Tab panel current. To me, the name tells you what this does. This grabs the current tab panel. But you might put a comment in here that says, hey, I'm running this on, I'm attaching this as a script trigger onto uh, a tab panel. Well, I think that's obvious, and some people put in the name of the script. It's a trigger. Well, I think that's obvious that this runs as a trigger. You don't need to put it the name. Just tell you tell it what it does. It's a tab panel and tells you what the current one is. That to me is obvious. If, you know, it's pretty clear. And once you look at the script, it's also clear. Then we got form view. Does some cool stuff here, but nothing complicated. List view is the same way. Not complicated. Go to layout. You can see all this stuff as I go through here is not very complicated. Now this one can see how it sets the layout it's pretty obvious set go to the last layout yeah, and it goes along with go to layout store or last layout store so having the same name here really helps out to identify that these go together and putting them close to each other so somebody else can figure it out or you can figure it out let's get into the fine section though here now the fine script I've really put a lot of comments on here where I thought they were necessary it talks about the loop why it's there it talks about how it's adaptive across all tables because of the way it's designed and you'll come in here and you'll see okay there's something that says uh, why uh, why it's doing this it says that this dynamic custom dialog step displays I got a little error here so I'll fix it there you go take that semicolon out of there correct message depending on the current layout so that's enough for you to realize that this formula in here is about grabbing the name of the table from the layout. I use naming conventions that allow me to identify my layouts without having to go into layout mode and see what table is attached to it. So I know what table's there. Makes a lot of sense. But then you see down here, I make it a comment not in green, but to save space so I don't get a really long script. I put it at the end of the formula. I do this quite a bit and you can read them just as well and they're there and just as easy to see. I'll do it right here. Why put in a comment and make this, you know, 35 lines, you know, for each one of these comments when you're really commenting the formula here and it's obvious if you want to read about what it does. 
So you can put more in here or less. It all depends. It's, it depends what you want to do. Uh, I personally think that uh, you know you got to comment just the right amount and comment things that might not make sense later. Now these aren't very complicated scripts, so I might not have in reality commented any of these this stuff because it's pretty clear. I would have probably made uh, in this case made a custom function out of this and put this into a, and then commented the custom function in there. So when they went to look at what this did, they would see oh that's a custom function that does this and they'll see that comment there. So it doesn't have to necessarily be in the script either to, to comment it. So it's a it's it's a you know it's that road you've got to you know you got to balance yourself and make sure that you're not going too far in either direction because commenting definitely will help you with complex scripts down the line. Now a lot of developers will put in information about when it was last modified at the top. And that's especially important when there's multiple developers working on a solution. I personally don't do that because I'm a one-man shop and I'm sitting here working on all the solutions myself. I don't need to know that kind of stuff. And with new features in FileMaker 18, you can compare versions and tell what's changed anyhow. So I don't really do that much. And uh, you know that's my naming conventions right there. Try to try work with that, and you know, decide whether you want to have dashes or folders or a hybrid between them. You know, just look at whatever you do and organize as you go, not just in the script workspace, but inside manage database, in the relationship section, in the field section, in the layouts. Just try to keep things nice and tidy as you go along. Sometimes they'll get messy, and you'll come back and have to maybe do a little bit extra work, but try to keep on top of it. It'll really help you be more efficient in your development career.